today we're actually going to be going over installing Flutter and going over a little bit about how it works. Um, not too deep into this, but just so that you can understand why we are doing what we are doing when we actually do install it. So anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into this. So let's go ahead and get on here. Um, we're going to go, we're going to type in Dart and we can actually go to dart.com. Um, whoops, nope, that's the, that's the wrong thing. Um, Dart, there we go, dartlang.com. Okay, so dartlang here, you can see this is actually going to be the programming language that we're going to be using to actually go ahead and um, to write a Flutter application, and this is what Flutter is actually uh, written in. So that's just something to know. Um, Dart is actually similar to JavaScript. So yeah, um, I believe I talked about this in the last lesson, but now you just, you know, you, you know the website as well. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, let's also finally now go to flutter.io. There we go. And we can see here how uh, it's clearly following, this website is cl clearly following material design. You can really tell that it's made by uh, made by Google. So let's go ahead and get started here. We can click on this Get Started, and you're going to click on Install on whatever you are on. I'm on Mac OS, so I'm going to click Mac OS. And there we go. It actually gives you this very, very comprehensive um, installation instruction here. So for this, for this, uh, in order to install it here, I'm just going to get Flutter Mac OS version 051. So let's download Flutter for Mac. All right, and that's going to take uh, a few minutes. Uh, so while we're doing that, I'm going to talk a little about what we need to do here. So we need to extract the file in the desired location. So, that, so that's all very simple. Um, and then here we're going to add the Flutter tool to your path. So essentially what that means is that uh, we're going to add the command Flutter. Um, we're going to essentially give it the uh, location of the application. We're going to tell our operating system where that application lives. So that's what we're doing right here. Now, of course, what this is actually going to do is actually going to make it temporary. So you can see here the above command sends your path variable temporarily for the current terminal window. So that's going to go ahead and uh, actually set it only for that terminal window. And if you want to set it in the entirety of the uh, of your op operating system, so that you can use it even if you close and then reopen your terminal, then we're going to need to actually update our path here. And here we can see update your path. Um, and so here we're going to update the path. So um, we're just going to do export path equals path to Flutter directory, and then we can see Rust source home bash profile to refresh the current window, and then verify that Flutter slash bin directory is now in your path by, ru by running echo path. So that's actually what we're actually going to be doing. So um, yeah, that's, uh, that, that is what we're going to be doing here once this actually finishes downloading. So I'm going to skip to where it's done here. All right, and there we go. So it, it went ahead and uh, it downloaded. So let me go and open this up and unzip it. This should give me a finer window here with it already unzipped. Of the uh, of the folder, this is taking longer than it usually does. Well, I mean, it is a pretty big download, so yeah, I mean, I guess that makes sense. Uh, okay, we're getting there, eventually, eventually. All right, there we go. Um, so here I have my Finder window with the Flutter directory, perfect. And uh, so yeah, there we go. Now we got the directory. We now need to actually set the actual path. Um, so if we go ahead and uh, open up Terminal here. All right, there we go. Let me make this bigger so that you can actually see. And we can see here all we need to do is uh, open or create dollar slash um, home. That's an environment variable bash profile. So we need to get the open up the bash profile. So we can just do open home bash profile. All right, and there we go. So it opens up in a text edit document. But you can open up open it up in pretty much any text editor you want. And you can see here that I already have a uh, a path set. But for the sake of uh, um, continuity. I'm going to go ahead and set it to the another Flutter to, to the to the Flutter um, path that I actually just installed. So I have it right now in my uh, home folder, but I'm going to set it for um, to the to it right here, which is actually my downloads. This so this is what I just downloaded, and that's uh, since I already had it installed. So let's go ahead and copy in this right here. So where is the actual? There we go. So it's in downloads right now. So I'm going to copy in the path there for downloads. There we go. Users are sending Chernik downloads and then slash flutter and then slash bin and that's going to be the path. There we go. Okay, so now that we got that exported, we can actually save that. Let's close it. Close this and then close this as well. We're going to close the terminal window. We're going to open up a new terminal window. Make sure you don't forget that. All right, there we go. Let me make it a little bit bigger again. And now we can finally do Flutter. And you can see here that we are going to get uh, the Flutter. So we're getting a, a ton of these commands. So that's uh, that's good. That means that we have a Flutter installed successfully. 
And we can actually do flutter dash dash reversion. And we're going to see that we get uh, 0.5.1, which is uh, correct. This is what we installed here. So if we go back to downloads here, you can see that we have, there we go. Flutter Mac OS version 0.5.1. So yeah, there we go. So this is right now where it's living. This is the Flutter directory. In fact, if I was to, for example, um, take this out of here. Let me show you here for a second. All right, there we go. And then let's close this terminal window and then let's open it up again. And now if we were to do Flutter, you can see that we actually get command not found. That's because we don't have this actual um, folder uh, inside the downloads folder. Now if we put it back here and do flutter and there we go. You can see that it's back and uh, now everything is working. So that's so make sure that you uh, keep your path uh, correct and make sure that you remember where you actually have this folder. Okay, so I'm going to keep it in my downloads for now just for the sake of this course. Maybe I'll move it later on, but that's essentially just, I mean, you already know how to do it, so um, it doesn't really matter what I do with it now. Um, let's move on now. Uh, we're also going to need Android Studio. So let's go ahead and do Android Studio. Let's search this up. There we go. We have download Android Studio. Now we can do this. So right now, right now there's really two options, uh, or at least two good options for um, two good options for developing Flutter applications. That to use, and that's to use Android Studio or to use uh, Visual Studio Code. So we're going to use Android Studio just because I feel like uh, it is it is a little bit better for developing uh, mobile applications as a whole. So um, so yeah, we're going to use Android Studio for this tutorial. But if you want, you can use also Visual Studio Code. That's also totally fine. Um, anyway, so you can see here that I'm downloading Android Studio right now for uh, um, you know for for developing the Flutter applications, and I'm going to cut here and then return when this will actually be done. All right, and there we go. So you can see now we have it installed. Let me go ahead and open up the uh, DMG here. All right, there we go, looking good. So now we have this uh, Android Studio file. Let's just drag that right on into Applications, and that should copy that. All right, there we go. Android Studio is pretty big. It's about uh, one. It's 1.37 gigabytes. So that's quite big, but uh, the emulator for Android is going to be around four to five gigabytes, depending on which uh, emulator you actually install. So yeah, generally it does take quite a bit of, uh, I mean, uh, you can use it just as uh, a regular mobile phone to uh, to run these applications. And you can totally do this with uh, Xcode and, uh, and an iOS device as well. But for the sake of, uh, you know, simplicity, we're just going to be using Android Studio. Just because if you, to, to use Xcode, uh, uh, you first of all have to have a, uh, a Mac since Xcode doesn't work on anything else. And then also you do need to have an iOS device or, uh, well, not, not really an iOS device, but you need to, again, have a Mac for it to run the actual emulator itself. So we're going to use Android Studio so that people on Linux and uh, Windows can get in on the uh, Flutter action as well. All right, and there we go. So we went ahead and got it open, and you should see it screen somewhere like this. So if you don't know what Android Studio is, it's actually, um, it's the IDE for Android developed by JetBrains, which actually develops some of the best um, IDEs out there, and they have them for pretty much every single language. So WebStorm, um, IntelliJ IDEA for Java, they've got uh, Golang, they've got PyCharm, um, and so on and so on. So they, are, they, they, they make a ton of IDEs, and all of their IDEs are actually very good. And they did actually partner up with Google to create Android Studio, so this is the IDE that we have here that actually, um, you know, is made for developing Android applications. So we're going to go to uh, select here. We're going to start a new Android Studio project. And there is actually a plugin um, in Android Studio that we're going to use to create Flutter applications. So for now, we're just going to create just a plugin. Actually, no, let's cancel. Let's actually, we actually go to configure here and then plugins. OK, and then here we can just type Flutter. All right, let's click search in repositories, and there we go. So we see Flutter languages. We got this one that has uh, 303,000 downloads, and let's just install that. And that's going to go ahead and install, and we can now restart Android Studio. And that's going to restart it. So re restart that. All right, here we go. This is uh, coming up here. It's getting restarted. Okay, should really buy uh, by uh, there we go. Never mind. Anyway, so now you can see we have this uh, start a new Flutter project option here. So we're going to be doing just that. Let's go ahead and click on that. We're going to create a Flutter application. And let's go to next. Uh, let's do project name. This is going to be Flutter app. Um, that'll work. 
um, Flutter SDK path. So this is actually the uh, path for Flutter, so where Flutter installation actually is located. And then we have uh, project locations. So let's go ahead and change this here to uh, slash, I don't know, documents slash Flutter dash course. This is going to be where all of our project files are going to be located. And the description here is a new Flutter application. That'll do for now. Okay, and let's call the project name uh, Flutter. Uh, right, we have to start it with uh, lowercase Flutter um, underscore um, Flutter eduonics underscore course. All right, and there we go. So now that we got all of that out of the way, let's go next. And we can just keep this all as is, and let's go ahead and finish. All right, and there we go. That's going to generate our project for us. Uh, we could also use the uh, actual uh, command line client for Flutter, but using an IDE is also valid. And uh, in our case, it's actually going to be work, work better because the IDE will provide a bunch of features that we don't usually have on a, um, you know, command line client. Anyway, so while that's creating, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause here, and then I'll come back as soon as it's, uh, it's done. All right, and there we go. You can see now that it actually generated our project for us, and we can see it here. And uh, if you're wondering where this code is, actually in this lib file, we have this main.dart. And if you go back to the Eduonix uh, YouTube channel video where we you know, went over Dart uh, Flutter Quick Start, you will actually see that uh, that's we, we essentially go over what exactly this does and how this application sort of works, the very basics of it there. Um, but essentially, um, this is just something that's generated by the command line client, um, kind of like a, a, an Angular. If you go ahead and generate a uh, an Angular application using the command line client, it's going to give you sort of like a default application. Same thing with Flutter here. And so now we can actually run this. Um, of course, we don't actually have a device to run this on. So you can see we, see we get no connected devices found. Please connect a device. Um, that's a problem. So you can connect your Android or iOS phone at this point if you want. Um, um, you know, you throw a USB port on your computer and just run it that way. But here, what we're going to do is we're actually going to go to the SDK manager. This is this button right here. Okay, and we're going to create a new, or actually, no, that's not the SDK manager, is it? Um, SDK manager? Oh, no, yeah, it's not the SDK manager. Um, virtual, virtual Device Manager, AVD, there we go, AVD Manager, there we go, I really forgot the name there. Okay, and here we're just going to create a new virtual device, uh, this is going to be, we're going to select Nexus 5X for this tutorial, because I mean, I, don't, I mean, okay, let's, let's, let's do something, something, something newer, let's go, uh, I don't know, Nexus 6, why not, oh, I can't do Nexus 6, let's, let's do Pixel, I, I think it'll do, alright, we're going to, then we're going to go, you know what? Actually, for the sake of for the sake of whatever, we're going to use Nexus 5X. Just, it's going to take less, less, um, less um, space on the computer. Anyway, now you're going to download a system image. So in my case, I already have Oreo downloaded. You can go ahead and download uh, whatever system image you want. Really, I'm um, trying to download 27 just so that everything is consistent to this course. Um, all right, there we go. So we, we're going to download that. We're going to go next, and then AVD name, Nexus 5X API, and we're going to just keep all this as the same, and let's finish. All right, and there we go. So now we do actually have this Nexus 5X API 27. There we go. Let's go ahead and uh, now we can go ahead and close this up. Okay, and then now we can do uh, select and open Android emulator Nexus 5X API 27. And that's going to go ahead and open up this emulator and get it started, start start running it. And this is what we're going to have right here to the left. This is this phone that's opening up. And I think I can actually go ahead and make this larger if I want. There we go. Just so that you can actually see what's going on here. That's the actual um, emulator itself. And then once this starts up, we can actually go ahead and run this application on this emulator. And then after that, we are actually finally done with the uh, actual installation of Flutter and Android Studio, and we are ready to get into the actual uh, logic of Flutter if we want. Okay, so while this is starting up, I'm going to pause here, and then we'll, when we'll come back, that's already going to get started up, and we'll actually run this code, and that will all be for today's lesson. All right, and there we go. We are back. We have our emulator started. It's doing a weird thing here. Um, okay, but there we go. We essentially an Android phone now running as a virtual machine on our uh, 
operating system. And now we can run this. Um, so we can just select this run file, this run button right here. And that's going to go ahead and actually run it on this uh, emulator. So let's give it a second here. Uh, I'm also going to skip here just because the video is long enough as it is um, to where it's actually finished. And all right, we are back. We went ahead and uh, did everything for us. We got everything done. And you can now see that our, our, our app is now running on our uh, emulator here. And we can now go ahead and, uh, you know, we have this, uh, you have pushed the button this many times. And I actually do go over what exactly this does and how it works sort of in my uh, Flutter Quick Start video on the Eduonics YouTube channel. So feel free to check that out if you want to know how this right here actually works. Anyway then, that is actually all for today's lesson.